How much does owning a boat, living on it, and sailing the world cost? The answer is that it costs all of it. All of your money. If you have $500, it will cost that. If you have $500,000, it will cost $500,000. If you enjoy the Scheidenfreude feeling of watching other sailors struggle with this fact, these upcoming videos are definitely for you. I want to thank all the viewers who left particularly awesome comments in the last video. We received some good ideas ranging from Choco's possible pedigree all the way to possibilities for our steering system. You followed some of our ups and downs and our life changes. Come on! With our journey back to Puerto Aventuras, and starting the new boat project. <clears throat> this throttle has to be replaced. I also want to thank our patrons again. I encountered a meme recently pointing out the simple fact that an average non-wealthy person dropping 20 bucks on something that they believe in is being hundreds or thousands of times more charitable relative to what they make compared to the most richest person in the world. And that, in my opinion, makes you heroes. Remember sailing my way? We sold her to our now good friend Scott in San Francisco, and he sailed the little boat all the way down to the Sea of Cortez. And now him and Lily have made a new little sailor, so they need more room on board. My Way is for sale in Baja, California currently, and for those who are interested in the perfect vessel for exploring all the nooks and crannies of fabulous Baja, California, check out the links below this video. We have some big plans for the little vessel that we took on as well. Up and down the Mayan Riviera, there are tons of spots that look really excellent for exploring, but that are inaccessible to deep uh, keeled boats. But now we have a wind powered little gizmo that has potential to access all these shallow spots. And although the sargasso weed has been making a complete mess of this coast, we see a lot of places on the charts that we would like to visit. We just have to rebuild it. Meanwhile, folks were commenting on a related sailing forum about our choice of vessel. I guess I agree that prows are the gangly, awkward, lopsided versions of multi-hulls, but Desesperado is oh so fast. We got busy sanding the main hull. I started with the old square sander that came with Inesperado, but it started falling apart immediately. So we bought two new tools. All was well until the brand new orbital sander started acting up, spinning freely instead of, well, orbiting. But that didn't stop the music completely, because we still had a functioning multi-tool. I removed this deck, which is gone, we're gonna clean the inside, and then we're gonna eventually gonna remake the waterproofing of the inside, make it buoyant and unsinkable. And it was cutting its way through the peeling fiberglass. A new day meant trying a new method for the orbital sander. Give me some power. Oh, that's a good boy. But then it decided to completely self-destruct as well. After having spent months of my life sanding other vessels, now I had somehow eaten through two sanders on this tiny little hull. I felt like Bruce Willis trying to make 800 feet after only drilling 20. The new sander was supposed to bring us many years of sanding bliss, but now it had already given up. Like, this tiny little boat was defeating me more than the 40-footer has been so far. I've only been using it for a couple of hours to do one side of the prow, and it's already broken. It exploded the bearing, the little bearing holder. I've never seen a bearing explode like that. I have, but on, on a diesel engine. Shaft and propeller got stuck, the bearing exploded, but that was... We knew that there was something wrong with the bearings uh, before it exploded because 
it wasn't oscillating properly. It was just making a complete spinning motion like a grinder and yeah, it just exploded. So on to new angles of attack. This is a rot situation. I found that the fiberglass was delaminating from the wood and underneath it, it's some icky rotten stuff. There only seemed to be rot at each end of the hull. So we double teamed it and cleared it out using chisels and light wire brush on the drill. Chisels and brush remove some of what we want to remove, but not all of it. Next, we'd have to find an economical way to sand the remaining portion of the hull, the ama, which is basically the second smaller hull of the prow, the two cross beams, two deck pieces, two rudders, mast, mast step, and extra wooden supports without a sander. Another solar cooker bites the dust. And a little while ago, we were devastated to lose the replacement GoSun tube that GoSun had sent us. We were looking forward to moving on to our new boat and finally settling in with the new stove. But before even getting to use it, the glue holding the glass tube to the aluminum unstuck itself. You might remember that the previous tube had two screws also holding the tube in place. This one unfortunately didn't have that and it came off even more easily. Well, we were lucky enough to have two free cooking tubes from GoSun. And we don't expect them to just keep on sending us new ones. So it was just the saddest thing ever and we no longer have one now. Also an update on the computer situation. I bought a used MacBook 12 inch from 2015. This computer has the same capabilities as my old MacBook Air, except with the one hopefully advantage of not having a fan in the case. This way it won't be pulling in quite as much salty air as the last one, which destroyed the last computer. So you could essentially consider the MacBook 12 like a tablet with a keyboard and all the usual programs that a computer has. So what I've been wondering is, are there other sailing video makers out there who have turned towards something more tablet-like for the issue of salt water getting in their computer circuit boards? Another helpful comment from one of our viewers suggested a kind of protective spray which you could spray down your electronics with, which would make like a protective coating over something like a circuit board. However, I still think that the key to maintaining a laptop in this kind of salty air environment is to either have a beefy circuit board in the first place, a beefy computer means a bigger computer in all the instances that I've seen, or to stop the salty air completely from being pulled into the case uh, via fan. What a little pest. <sighs> One day at the beach, we were dodging another drone and dodging some seabirds when we experienced our first drone crash since first taking flight when we bought it. The two front props became chewed up from the rough landing and we replaced them without realizing that there are actually left and right props. We were just about to send the drone back to the States under warranty, thinking that it had suffered a malfunction of some sort during the fall. The wrong way. Yeah, they are. But then Robbie noticed that the forward propellers were pushing the drone downwards. It's spinning the wrong way. So hooray, we didn't break one thing. <laughs>